from previous meeting, the regular meeting, Tuesday, August 9, 2022. Make a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting. Second. Thank you. Uh, Pam. Aye. Brian. Aye. Tyler. Aye. Motion carries 3 0. <laughs> Number three, claims and payroll. Anyone have any questions? Motion approved, claims and payroll. Okay. Second. I'll say a motion. Tyler. Aye. Brian? Aye. Pam? Aye. Motion carries. Number four, reports. Mayor, is doing here? Police Chief? Yes. <coughs> Good evening. Hello, sir. Hello, Chief. Um, so I put in front of you guys, it's the... <coughs> It's an, it says the dispatch call log. I'm going to be giving you guys that monthly. However, I can't stress this enough that there's going to be open cases in that log. So it needs to stay right mm -hmm. here. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'll try to do my best to redact names as, as we go along, but that's not always going to be the case. And once it hits the court system, it's public information anyway. But you're probably going to know just about everybody that's in that log. So... Um, what you're look what you're looking at is basically time that I'm called out, how long I'm on the call, what the call is about, and that's where I get the numbers that you have here. Okay, these are not accurate. I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of sat down. I'm like, yep, that's about right, just simply because I, I didn't get it done till probably 15 minutes ago. Um, but the actual activity log is kind of like checks and balances too, so you can see what officer is doing what. And not that you guys are going to question that, but you'll just see exactly how busy we are. Um, I was gone August because oh, I was at the rally. That was a good time, so I'm not sorry for that. Um, but July was very busy. August was just as busy, and September's turning out to be just as busy as August is. And I think once we get the new guy hired, that's going to hopefully calm down after the next April. But... Um, if you guys have any questions for me regarding that log, feel free to ask. I don't mind telling you. Um, but if you don't have anything for me, then that's all I got for you. Thank you. Yep. That's a great work. Economic development, Susan? Oh, okay. City superintendent. Um, he's not there. Uh, some reports I'll give for him is obviously they've been doing some concrete work, some fixing some curb stops and water mains. Um, we did get the final from leak inspectors after we emptied our pool. The, all the seams are shot in it, so we'll have to redo all the seams in there. So we'll, we'll probably go out for requests for bids. Um, he did give me a quote. We're looking around 40000 We'll have to make sure we give it offer it for everybody. Um, our street sweeper that we bought is we have it finally now, so you'll see that roaming around here. Especially come fall in the leaves. Um, other than that, we're just, we have a lot of work at C and D and a lot of, a lot of uh, transportation calls. So. Up and going, up and going good, using it, yep. Nope, not yet, we'll look in, so as soon as everything comes in, we'll talk about selling. Um, if you guys so choose, probably the Tahoe, the backhoe, the truck, and the old sweeper. So, we're waiting for the last batch to come in. And they've given me two weeks for the last six months, so it's, whenever it gets here, we'll deal with that, so. Okay. City Attorney, Mr. Curtis? I don't have anything that's not otherwise on the agenda. Okay, thank you. <coughs> number five, discussion action, ordinance number 981, revise and provide rules and regulations regarding nuisances. And, you, know, you, you don't have Luke here, but 981, 982 are his recommendations and suggestions for clarifying the nuisance ordinances into a format he would be more comfortable with and think is easier to deal with and there's probably nothing the matter with that. Uh, I guess I think you should cooperate with him if he's going to take care of that stuff. <coughs> and we looked him over and had a couple comments and suggestions and he took what was pertinent and put it in there the way we had a little meeting at the city office and sent him a list of requirements or suggestions and he fixed his issues and a few typos along the way that we got to make fun of. Uh, the, the third one, the repeal of 4402, 
Uh, you'll get that far right shortly. And that's the Board of Health procedure for cleaning up nuisances. And you, know, you don't have to use it. It could be left in there or you can repeal it. You could do it either way. It was used in the last 10 or 15 years as an alternative to prosecution, but it's never been very popular and it has so many steps it's never been very effective. His suggestion is just get rid of it and take the Board of Health procedure out of there, which I certainly have no problem with. It has caused confusion over the years to have two or three ways to go about this. I think I've probably tried to explain it to four or five different councils. And if you just back off to just the nuisance procedure and do away with the Board of Health nuisance stuff, <coughs> it's clean. So I think it's all everyone's consensus that the changes are fine. You should go ahead and pass them. And if you want to repeal 402, have at it. Sorry, not, uh, number five, ordinance number 981, revise and provide rules and regulations regarding nuisances. I'll make a motion to pass ordinance 981. Okay, have a second. I'll second that motion. Okay, any discussion? Okay, uh, Tyler? Aye. Brian? Aye. Pam? Aye. Motion carries 3 0 on first reading. Motion to waive second and third reading. Okay, second. I'll say that motion. Second. All in favor, Pam? Aye. Brian? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Motion carries 3 0. Number six, discussion action ordinance number 982, revise and provide rules and regulations regarding nuisances specifically defined. Pass ordinance 982. Okay, second. Second. All in favor, Pam? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Brian? Aye. Motion carries 3 0. First reading. Motion to suspend second, third reading. Okay, second. Second that motion. Okay, all in favor, Brian? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Pam? Aye. Motion carries 3 0. On second and third reading. Number seven, discussion action ordinance number 983. Revise and provide rules and regulations regarding nuisances, repeal code 4 402. Motion to pass ordinance 983. Okay. Second. I'll second that motion. Pam? Aye. Brian? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Motion carries 3 0 on first reading. A motion to uh, suspend second, third reading. Okay. Second. I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor, Brian? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Pam? Aye. Motion carries 3 0 on the second and third readings. Number 8, discussion action resolution number 654 updates to stop yield signs and parking limits. Now, this has got about 15 different parts. Here's a draft that does everything that Courtney had on her list. If you need to edit it, we're going to have to scratch and reprint. But if you do it all the way it was suggested, just take one and hand down the file. Yeah, they didn't like my part. <coughs> it's it's impossible to discuss last meeting quite a bit or a little bit. Yeah, you you're you're kind of the spearhead spearhead of this one. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I look at that? Here's an extra copy. Thanks, sir. Yeah, I got a couple. I mean, this what you've got in front of you just mirrors, in a little more formal language for a resolution, sure. what Courtney had her email. I left out the thing that was scratched out on the bottom copy of what I had, the northbound stop sign on the front. Oh, okay. Because there's stop sign. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, the map that Jeremy sent out kind of covers them all. <coughs> but if you need to discuss them one at a time, that's policy business. I just had two questions. I was just clarifying. So on the cemetery road, okay. so when you come into town, or like when you're going out of town, we're removing the two. From south to north, correct? Yes. yes. And when we're coming into town, we're removing the one would be in front of Haver Camp and Wigger's house. Where's one, Haver Camp? Um, 
like the road where you go to the, the only one that I want to keep, and I think is, it might be easier, is you know where Billy Ray Hoshite's yeah. house is? That's is leave asking. that one. That's what I was asking. Yes, okay. yes, that is to... correct. And then the other one, when you're coming in from the south, okay, and where Mary's is located, not yes, former Legion. So I don't remember a time there ever not being a stop sign. There. Okay, so I'm just saying pe people with being creatures of habit. Uh, fair enough. Um, and I will. Well, talk. I don't have a problem with that. I would just, sure. Just make it yeah. Sure. No. And and here's my reasoning behind that. Like I I can hear people tell me so and so didn't stop. I have so many people not stopping at the stop signs. Right. So I'll go plant myself there and sit there for about an hour and guess what everybody does. Stop. Right. Because um, they see that white car with the blue and red lights on it. Yeah. Well, of course. I mean, so. So I don't want to slow down. <laughs> and I, I I watching traffic at that intersection. It's kind of silly anyway. I've seen people just like, oh, do I go? Do I wait? Especially on Locust when you're going east to west. Because there's no... It's a throughway. I mean, right. there's no stop. Well, when trucks are coming from, you know, Highway 20 going south, I mean, they're not, they're not going that fast anyway. So I don't know why they need to stop again and then just take off right. one more time. But if we put a yield sign there... That would require the people going east to west to yield to know that there's some traffic. There's it's throughway, um, and the park. And when when you come out of Mary's parking lot, they're they're watching for traffic. They come out, and not everybody stops at that stop right. sign. That's the truth. You're I mean, to get and then you stop to stop again. Right. So that's one another reason why I think that that one's kind of silly. Leave the stop sign at Front Street. That silly little angle, mm -hmm. yield sign on locust east to west and then get rid of the north and south i just wanted it on camera to clarify yep. nope that's mm -hmm. fine that's the only two questions i had okay anybody for, else for only any a questions? couple hundred thousand we could turn it into a roundabout let's do that do you know how much fun that would be <laughs> <laughs> do you know how many people would fly over that thing oh, God. <laughs> Budget's already done. Late, sorry. Uh, okay well budget's done thanks sure. jeremy buzzkill I mean, I, I kind of remember some of these stop signs being installed in the recent years just because mm -hmm. things were being patrolled. Obviously, we're going to do that. Absolutely. I mean, it's... It's like West, Northwest Street. I mean, that's a highway. Yeah. So. Um, I will tell you the time I pulled over, and I don't mind telling you guys this, I pulled over two people on Northwest Street. And he was 82 years old, and I was embarrassed both times because I'm like, I cannot believe I'm actually going to write this ticket. But he just, I mean, he's old. And not that that is an excuse, but he's like, oh, I didn't realize how fast I was going. The car was old. I don't even think the speedometer worked. But um, the stop signs going out of town just make no sense to me. Right. And we'll patrol it. I mean, I have never had anybody speed except for him on that, on that street, honestly. I know the biggest complaint is I've had are semis that have not stopped because they're they're rolling through that stop sign coming north to south. And that's the biggest complaint that I've had. But I can't, you know, I can't do anything if I'm not there and I don't see it. So I think just constant traffic control that will, you know, that will help that out too. So And that stop sign staying. That stop sign is staying. Yes. If I mean yeah, if, I mean, we, vote, if we vote on it. I mean, vote. that's one I'd like to keep in place, so. And then does anybody have any concerns about um, the new parking restrictions that were requested? Uh, it was kind of a, a toss-up, like, what side do we want them to park on? Um, I There was an accident there on Elm Street, Oh, I think it was the 2nd of September, 3rd of September. Um, just the way the cars are parked, the individual couldn't see this vehicle coming south to north because of the way that they are staggered on parking. So we just felt that maybe, or that if you keep it uniform, like by the band shell. Yep, so the band you know, shell, you can't so, park on the west side, or right. east side currently. And I know when there's two, when people don't take their cars off the streets for when it snows, we can't get a snow plow through. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so tight there. So, and some people just park on the street whether they have driveway or not. They just think that's where it belongs. So. Right. So, do you guys have any? I don't, don't worry about backing into anybody. So I'm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
That's a good thing. So I don't know if you guys have any other questions about any of the other stop signs. Well, they can park on your side. It's not yours. <laughs> no, I don't. They think that their side is theirs, though. Yeah, they do. Really? I mean, I, I don't know that I've ever gotten a call about that, Tyler. <laughs> you didn't need a call. <laughs> thank you. You know what? Thank you for that. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate that. You know, that's amazing yeah. that you were neighborly. Yeah. Huh. Very neighborly. Thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion on resolution number 654 that's proposed? Okay. As for a motion. Motion 654 to pass resolution 654. Okay, second. 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 All in favor, Brian? Aye. Tim? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Motion carries 3 0. Number 9, discussion action approval to open new bank account for NAHTF grant funds. Um, I asked, well, we've just finished two weeks ago. Yes. We finally signed all the paperwork, so that's actually going to start now. The fourplex will actually be going now. Um, but I did ask at that meeting if I needed a separate bank account that was not interest bearing for the funds and he told me yes. So I'm just getting ahead of the ball before we start getting grant money in. I just need your permission to open a new account. I'll bring a resolution next month with the actual account number on it and authorized signer so you guys can approve that. But uh, the DTR one, I kind of got blindsided. Like as I was getting money, she's like, oh, by the way, you need a separate account. I'm like, Awesome. So I'm just going to do it now before we get too far ahead. So that's all I need is permission to open a new account. And it'll be at Midwest Bank. A motion to approval to open new bank account for NAHTF grant funds. Second. Like that motion. Second. Okay. Pam? I abstain. Okay. Brian? Aye. Tyler? You want me to vote yes just to get three or two enough? Two with one abstention? Two more times. Okay. Okay. Motion to raise 2-0 with one abstention. Number 10, discussion action, approval of full-time police officers. I should have stayed there. You should have just stayed. I know, I didn't have walking last night. Holy cow. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I could, right? Okay, so um, I have made... I selected the officer that I would like to work for uh, Plainview. His name is Andrew Funston. He's here tonight. I could sit up here and talk to you about him all day long, but I don't, who knows him better than him than himself, right? So um, the reasons I selected him was his background. We're pretty like-minded. He's not from Plainview, so he doesn't really know anybody, and I think that's a plus. It works for me because I didn't know anybody here in town either. Um, so with that being said, I'll go ahead and have him come up and he can talk about himself a little bit and I don't know, either bore you or excite you, however you want to look at it. So Andrew, if you want to go ahead and come on up. Good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. So thanks, Chief, for uh, giving me this opportunity. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting a few of you. So a few of you know kind of about who I am. Uh, for those that don't, I give you a brief summary. Okay. I give you a brief summary. Um, I've got over 14 years of law enforcement type experience. I worked alongside the Federal Protective Service, part of Homeland Security. Um, I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. I did two combat tours to Iraq. I've also got a college education with a master's degree in management. Um, to keep it brief. A uh, big question I get asked by a lot of people is why Plain View? Very honest you know, uh, question, especially since my wife and I recently moved here with our son from the Seattle area. Well, I can tell you we wanted to find a place that was more like minor on how we thought about things in life, how we wanted our lives to be. And she's got family out in North Platte. And so she said, how about we move to Nebraska? said great let's let's look into it um, first job I found was out in North Fork she bought a, you know we bought a house out here in Plainview they moved out a week prior before I did and the call I got every night was how amazing everybody is here how polite courteous respectful everybody is everybody weighs hi to everybody 
Um, they feel really safe here. We don't feel like we have to lock our doors all the time, watch you know everything we do, and uh, that was good to hear. Uh, as somebody who has you know the extensive law enforcement background as I do, that's something I always want to hear. Uh, the reason why I applied for the position was because of that reason. Um, I want to take my skills and experience in education to help keep this town that way, to help keep it safe and keep the community the way it is from where I see it from the outside looking in, a very close-knit community that looks out for each other, helps take care of each other, and has a lot of the you know, traditional traditions and values that you guys have all shown us here. So um, if anybody wants to ask me any questions, I'm open for any questions. I'm the adjutant of the Legion. I'll be talking to you. <laughs> I forgot to warn you about she's your, neighbor, she's your neighbor to the south, the block on the other side. So Chauncey's on one side, and I got Seth on the other side. A block to the another south. Block. A block to the south. Don't worry, you'll get to know her. <laughs> I'm fine, you know. I'd have to ask my wife who seems to have time to know everybody in town. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And do you have any questions? I don't know. Right. Right. No. All right. Good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Entertain a motion to approve Andrew as a full-time police officer for the city of Plainview. Make that motion. Okay. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Pam. Aye. Brian? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Motion carries 3-0. Number 11, discussion, action, approval of wage. So I feel with his experience and education, starting him out at 1850 would not being certified, I think is fair. Um, once he graduates the academy, which won't be until next April, unfortunately, because that's as soon as I could get him into the academy, um, I'd like to see a... a at least a dollar raise at that point, 1950. So I'd like to start him out at 1850. Um, I will tell you that I've got a contract that he will sign, and we'll, we can just do that afterwards, Brian, if you're okay with that. But I would like to at least start him out at 1850. Any discussion? Um, what, what kind of hours is, would a guy for start off working, like uh, so eight to five, or just kind of when, when you have? The way that it's going to have to work, Tyler, based on the new LB51 that came out for law enforcement, he can't work the street. He right. can't have any interaction with public until he's certified, okay. right. even with me. Like, if I take him out with me on the hours that I work, he's just going to have to shadow. I mean, there can't be any discussion whatsoever. Um, so what I have incorporated, and I hope you guys will be okay with this, I've talked with County um, while he's you know, from here to, from today until, or the third, um, until he goes to the academy January 1. He's gonna do quite a bit of ride-alongs with the county to kind of see how the county operates. Um, I, I'm gonna have him read policies that we have, um, ordinances. He's gonna work a couple times in dispatch so that he can understand exactly what dispatch is like when, we're, when they're busy and we're out on the street. Um, <laughs> I might even have him ride along with Pierce Police Department a couple times just so that they can under, he can understand what, how they do things. Um, but to be honest with you, for that first three months, yeah. it's just going to be kind of training. That's all it, that's all it can be. That's, so, that and I'll work the schedule with the county guy, so he'll give us the 40. I mean, he's going to get yeah. the 40 hours a week. Um, I may take him out on a, on a Saturday or Sunday just so he can see what a, a Saturday night is like. But to be honest with you, sometimes the daytime is a lot busier than the nighttime. I'm just going to throw that out there. So that's what my plan is until he goes to the academy. And then when he's in the academy, he can't, um, he's not going to, and I don't mean to say he, like, you're not here, but um, um, the weekends is going to be time with the family and studying because there's a lot of studying involved. And obviously we know that with what happened with Jordan. He filled out because he didn't put a lot of time into studying. So that's what the weekends are going to be. So his work week is going to be at the academy Monday through Friday. And then when he comes home um, from the academy, the weekend is going to be his to do what he needs to do. So. Thank you for explaining that. Yep, you're welcome. I'll make a motion to approve his wage at eighteen fifty an hour. Second. Second. Uh, Tyler? 
Pam? Aye. Brian. Aye. So motion carries 3 0. Number 12, discussion action approval of employee wages, fiscal year 2022 to 2023. These are just the same as we've seen. We just got to approve them. Well, it's just the same we've talked about. Uh, there's no changes from last time. So, it's October 1st, our fiscal year. I'll make a motion to approve the employees' wages for yeah. 2022 to 2023. Yes. The budget. The budget wages, yes. The budget. Yes, okay. the budget. Second. I'll second the motion. Okay. Brian? Aye. Kyler? Aye. Pam? Aye. Motion carries two to one. Number 13, discussion action change date of council meeting due to general election November 8th, 2022. So it'd be similar to the primary in May where we had it on the Thursday, two days later, if that works for everyone. I will not be able date? to be here on the 10th. Different I have another date. meeting okay. that night that I cannot miss. Okay. So if you can find someone to take my spot, that's fine. But what other dates would work? Actually, no one. I don't know if I'd be here on the 10th either. Perhaps I would be interesting. I wouldn't have a problem with the seventh. That would be school board, though, wouldn't it? No, they do the next week, right? Yeah, the first plans on. Yep. How soon did they set up? Did they set up? I mean, would that be a problem with them setting up for the election the next day? No. Or how soon did they do that? They don't come here until the next day. Oh, the next day. It starts at eight, so they don't. Okay. Does the first Monday work for you? That would be. to approve it the, the November meeting of November 7th due to the general election on November 8th. Second. Second. I was just going to say for discussion, um, does the zoning board doesn't always meet, correct, on the first Doesn't meeting. always meet, no. But the library meets at 515 and they're usually out here by 6 or 615. Okay. All right. Uh, voting in. Uh, Brian? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Pam? Aye. Motion to carry is 3 to 0. Number 14, discussion action budget workshop fiscal year 2022 to 2023, which we decided on next Tuesday at 7.30 p.m., is that correct? Yes, correct. So this is just a little heads up, so if anybody has any questions or comments for next week, um, nothing fancy. This is just a couple pages out of the state budget that we have to submit in. It's just gonna explain that what we're gonna take in and what our expenditures are. I may not attend. What's that? I may not attend. Oh, that's all right. We're going to be off with a couple of you guys to pass it on to. Everybody. You want to? Yes, sir. I'm not passing it Thank you. Okay. So, Courtney, did you want to? I didn't. I just gave all mine away. Oh, gosh. I just gave all mine away. Bring I'll give you yours back. Don't worry. You, you're so good. You already know what's going on. Thank you, Betcha. I need this too. You don't get it. I cheated. So we'll start off the first page, and I'll go over all this obviously next week too. But this is all just uh, state the main points over here. So obviously our taxes will bring in a total of four hundred thousand eight hundred seventy-four and five cents. Um, the county does get one percent of that, so we're at three ninety-six nine hundred five. Uh, so that's our total intake, and if you look at the front page, this includes the manner and everyone. You see our past year's actuals and estimates. So those numbers, it shows that we have a uh, cash reserve of $4.5 million. We don't actually have that. The manor has over half of their uh, cash for, for us. So we can flip to the next page, and this is really where our adopted budget numbers will come through. And like I said, I'll explain them all next week. This will give us... A heads up. So I'm not going to talk about the operating expenses because that covers salaries, um, fuel, insurance, normal operating expense that we're going to have to incur. 
So we have capital improvements, other capital outlay, debt service, and our transfers. So if we go to the last page, so it really, I really kind of spread it out there for what those numbers truly mean. So City Hall, capital improvements, we're doing flooring and HVAC, and we budgeted, let me see, this page up, we? we budgeted 30,000 for that. Uh, we talked about the ready. Um, the 4,000 for other capital outlay, that's more for any of our electrical equipment. If we have a copier go down, computers, um, anything technical like that. And then the transfer out is actually our general obligation bonds. That's 75,775. Uh, the two bonds that we have for our general obligation bonds are our library and our streets. Um, we had a lot fall off this year, so our taxes are actually, we're going to levy less this year than we did last year. So our taxes for a levy basis actually went down. Uh, we had some bonds fall off, so that's really helped us out. Uh, moving on for the police, the other capital outlay is equipment. We set that aside for any equipment we'll need, anything for Andrew, if we have to buy any extra gear, vests, guns, um, all that's set aside there for him. Uh, we put out uh, 5000 that. Luckily, we already purchased a gun for him, so that's already paid for. Um, so we're hoping that'll cover his equipment that he needs to fit him. Uh, we move down to the streets. Uh, obviously, you see five hundred thousand dollars for capital improvements. Uh, that's an estimate. That is for Euclid, Pilcher, and Sixth Street. Uh, last year, when the bids came in, it was four eighty-five. Uh, we rejected it, but we want to make sure we cover our basis on those. So we kept that at five hundred thousand. That'll obviously be a bond that we put through, but we have to show that we will we will take it and extend it. And it might not even be on this fiscal year. If the bids come in, which come in uh, the 22nd of September, it might be where the contractor is not going to finish till, the, till after October 1. So they might even roll over to our next year. Um, the other capital outlay for the streets is at 13000 That is for uh, a snowblower for a skid steer. We haven't really looked for one yet, but uh, what I've looked through, it's been around there. I've asked some people to tell me some numbers, and they haven't gotten back to me yet. So. <laughs> Uh, debt service, so I didn't write it down here for the streets, but debt service, that's just an old street pavement. That's 9th Street, we're still paying the debt on. We refinanced that loan, I believe last year, it was that balloon payment we're working on, and some and some other uh, structure we're paying off for streets. The manor, so you see the, and this is where it says, it says public health and social services. That's really an umbrella term. Um, that's gonna fall into our sales tax for uh, social services. So that 84,000, is actually manor funds for sales tax. Uh, we put it down for capital uh, payments because we figure it's the fire hood. Uh, we have not received any any receipts yet, so we haven't paid it out yet. So most likely it'll be on our next fiscal year payout. And then they do have some future projects that the boards are talking about, possibly carpet, possibly HVAC, and some other things. So um, we budgeted some extra money for them there if they need to use it in the future. So culture and recreation, which is our next one. That is a huge broad term. That falls under our libraries, our parks, our summer rec, our pool. Um, so that encompasses all recreation and culture. Um, our biggest ones is our capital improvement for $100,000. That's obviously are gonna be mostly our pool. Um, and we have our park sidewalks need some attention and some other layouts. So we put 25,000 in the parks, which like I said, we'll have us broke down when we do budget, but 25,000 for the parks and then 75,000 will mostly come out of the pool. Um, we just got a rough quote so far. The pool needs all new crack filling and everything. It's going to be about $40,000. And then we still have to get a quote back from the filters, the motors, and everything else we need. So we're projecting to spend about $100,000 in that category. Um, the other outlay is at $15,000. That comes from Summer Rec, which is actually our baseball and soccer fields. Um, we need to update some bathrooms there. Uh, we need to do some redo some concrete. They've gotten donations for a cover for the Legion grandstands, and they've asked us if we could help with the concrete. And I think it's a good deal for us to do so. It's about $20,000 for the cover, and we'll just be helping out with uh, about $5,000 worth of concrete or less. And then the other five grand, we'll, we'll need it when we re do the lights for the west um, small north ball field. Uh, we received the lights from the school, and obviously we'll need some new wiring conduit. Um, we're gonna work together, hopefully with uh, Blake uh, and North, or NICOM and help out with trenching and everything. So hopefully we'll get that done pretty cheap. Um, debt service, you see that 48330 that is actually the last, I believe it's the last, that is the last playground equipment payment that we have for Childers Park. So although we did get a little grant for it, 30000 when it first came in, the majority of it had to be, um, we had to get a loan for it. So we're almost done paying for that. I, I'm pretty sure it's our last payment this year, so that would be nice to get off our books. 
Community development, um, that we don't have anything in there, but that's the operating expense. That just looks huge at 1.5 million. That is, um, that'll be any grants, loans, DTR. So that might not all come in for operating expense, but we have that coming in and going out as a pass through. So that, that involves um, LB840, RBG, RIRP, and even Keno. So that's where that lies. Um, the electric utility capital improvements. So we just, I just put this in here just in case we need to redo anything in the electrical plant when our generator leaves and everything for capital outlay for any equipment. Um, if we have to worry about heating or cooling or any updates to the outside of the building. I would like to see us finish our lights on the outside of the power plant and do some painting because it looks kind of rough. So um, through DTR, we weren't allowed, the city wasn't allowed to utilize our funds and everybody's fixing up their business and here our power plant's looking, looking a little rough. We don't have to spend that money, um, but I just put it there to, to even it out. So that's, that's a choice we can make down the road. Uh, the transfer out, that obviously is a transfer out of electric, which we usually do to provide funds for our general fund. So although our general fund did go up on valuation 26 point some percent, we are still not able to cover through taxes um, all of our needs. Uh, solid waste, which is a transfer, and the CMD, that debt service is payments on equipment that we purchased last year, and that transfer out is also the general fund. Wastewater, which is our sewer. So 15,000 in other capital, that is really set aside for when things break down. We have motors and everything that run our, our uh, lift stations and everything. Um, and most of those just take maintenance and upkeep. We usually utilize most of that money on capital or even more when we have pumps go out. Uh, debt service is an SRF loan for the lagoons. We're still paying on that, obviously. We will be for a long time. We just, we just uh, redid the rate last year through the state. Um, the water department, so the 300,000 capital improvements, that's obviously our YZF well down here on 4th Street. Uh, we, all, we hope that that solves our problems. We really won't know. Uh, October 6th should be where the bids come in on those from Miller & Associates, so we'll find out what company's going to start coming in and finding out if we get lucky and it works. Um, if it does, we'll grab $200,000 out of our out of our ARPA money to pay for that, and then we'll have $100,000 left to come up with to finish that out. This project might roll over to the next fiscal year, but we made sure that we had it all in here for if, if everything goes well on time schedules. Um, so other capital and outlay, that's more of the equipment that is ERTS, that can be for valves and, and everything else like that. We've been spending a lot of money on, on valves and redoing it. When we break up the streets, we have valves that don't operate, and so we just need to keep up on upkeep. We found it where we've tried shutting off mains and they just don't operate. Obviously, you go around and we exercise them every year, but exercising a valve once a year, and we have how many hundreds of valves around, they sometimes just go bad. And then the, and the last 90,000 is transferring the general fund again to support it. So we're transferring in about 199,000 to our general fund. Last year, we transferred 366. So we are improving. Um, one of the biggest things is we, we took the auditor's um, idea about the stair stepping and how much we needed to do. Uh, Courtney and I, we don't get paid out of the general no more. We switched to the power plant this year. Um, we're trying to meet. We're trying to meet our goals that the auditor wants us to meet. So we're trying to move forward and, and work it so it looks better for us on paper. Uh, so if all goes according to plan, which most likely won't, we probably won't get all the grants in and out and everything. But our our total budget, and this includes the nursing home, is uh, just shy of 8.2 million for disbursements and transfers. Um, so all in all, it's actually down from last year. Our budget is it's down, I believe. Uh, I didn't bring that sheet of paper, but I believe it's like 6% lower. Uh, last year we levied 66 cents, kind of like the school, but we would be down to the 61 cents when we get done. So we're, we will be um, lowering the levy. Uh, so we're pretty happy. We don't have any major, major uh, capital expenditures except for the streets, which we knew were coming. Um, other than that, equipment, we're going to hold off another year on anything else we need, and we think we're being pretty conservative. Is there any questions from anyone? I know that was kind of fast. I'll redo it all Tuesday. And I ruined Brian's speed of being out in a half hour. But uh, Tuesday will be a lot longer. I wouldn't get into depth on exactly every account and what things are worth. And, and But if anybody has any questions, they can talk to me now. They can talk to me from now to next Tuesday, during Tuesday. But I mean, if you have any questions, give me a heads up. We can talk about anything we want. So That's 7 p.m. next week? 7.30. 7.30. 730. Okay. Yes. Yep. As long as Brooke posted in the paper tonight, it will be. 
I'll make sure he does that. Mm. So, um, does anybody have any questions? Anything they think we need to change, want to change, want to see? I think we're out of whack. Thank you. Number 15, council comments. Pam? Yeah. Tyler? Yeah. Brian? Good. Motion to adjourn? Oh, I, oh. I'm sorry. Oh. I have two things. Oh. It won't take that long, I promise you. Um, I, I meant to mention this in my little spiel. I have had some break ins in vehicles again, you guys, mostly on the northwest side. Um, the last break in was Sunday morning between the hours of 1 and 7. Um, it was pretty specific. It was actually windows getting broken out with the window punch. Um, I will tell you that I'm working with Norfolk PD. They've got a couple of people that are actually from Norfolk. It's not anybody from Plainview that's been breaking in their cars. However, they do have associates here. So I think they're working together. So please keep your cars locked. Take your valuables out. Spread the word. Don't leave guns. Don't leave wallets. Don't leave purses change anything with value, take them out of your vehicle, okay, because nine times out of ten, I'm not going to catch them. And I'm not saying that because I suck. I'm just saying that because it's hard to catch, it's hard to catch them. You know what I mean? So, please be aware of that. And then the second thing I wanted to say is the dispatch is working fabulously. So, thanks for that. I mean, it has, they don't, they, they are now realizing just how busy Plainview is. Like, holy cow, I can't So, you're welcome and thank you. <laughs> 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 um, yep. You talked about breaking. How come nothing's ever put in the paper so people are maybe look out a little more when they're breaking? You know, like maybe people will say what they will put it in the paper, not just pay counsel. You know, it's a very good question. You know what I mean? I do. Um, yeah. Social media, though, and I will be very honest. But not everybody does social media. So, can I answer? Yeah. Okay. So, even though it's going to go in a newspaper, um, it can hinder an investigation. Oh, I mean, yeah. and on social media, I think that's, it can be a good avenue, but also, now I've got these people that I've got an eye on, I've got a beat on, I've got a lead on, and now this stuff is getting put on social media and they run and hide, and now i got nothing. I'm back to square one after a couple months. So I do think like the Crime Stoppers in the newspaper might be all right. Hey, if, if anything, hey, people lock your cars. But I think it's been happening over the course of two years that people know that it's happening. So good question. I don't mean to shoot you down like that. I, and I didn't mean anything by that, so please don't take offense. It's just sometimes it can be an investigation. Um, I, and I, I can work with Brooke on that as far as like, you know, um, throw something on the paper, say, hey, people lock your cars. But we should know that. I mean, unfortunately, we have, we've come to that. Um, more cameras are getting put up. Just because it's on camera, though, I've got video of two people walking by a, an individual's house. However, I can see them walking, but I got nothing other than two people walking. I don't have facial features. I've got nothing. So there's that. Um, but that's a good question, and I might talk to Brooke about that. If, if nothing else is, hey, people walk the car the top of Thank you. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Make that motion. Second. Okay. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. We're adjourned. See you next Tuesday at 730.